Yo, BJ Gador with the BJ Gador podcast. And joining me today is the legend himself from the Great Lakes, Minnesota, Jeremy Scott of the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast. How we doing, Jay? I'm good, man. How are you? I am fantastic. You know, we were just talking before the recording here about how great it is to get to the point. You know, obviously, I'm 41, you're 40, tender age, and we get to do things we uh, really enjoy now at this uh, stage of our careers. Yeah, I mean, if I had to just sit and talk about hypertrophy and like riding an assault bike for the next however long I am working for, uh, I don't want to do it, man. Like I just I'm over some of it. Well, we're, we're big time NBA fans. Uh, we grew up during, honestly, I, I mean, the heyday, the golden age of the NBA, which was the passing of the torch from Magic and Bird to MJ. And we've seen some great basketball since we've, we've been blessed with Kobe. LeBron, and we're going to talk about a bunch of things today with a really like one hour rapid fire NBA season preview. And those listening to actually, I have Trevor Lane of Lakers Nation tomorrow for a Lakers season preview. All the people who hate basketball that listen to my podcast are just so pissed off right now. But look, if you want the fitness, you got to get some basketball, too. I'll, uh, I'll share a David Jack quote here. He just he famously said he's like, take what you want, leave the rest, man. And this is this is one of those moments. That really is uh, more and more. That's how I'm approaching everything I do. Well, dude, to, to be able to do what this is for this long, for any job, I don't care if you're a teacher, accountant, fitness, whatever, to do it for this long, like and only talk about the same thing over and over and over with no evolution, like it's just not fun. And like this is all like, well, there's no rules to what we do. So like no. this fits in perfectly like this is an interest if you like it and if you go hard enough like you might be just talking about lakers shit six years from now and that's all you do because that became the thing i'm like how awesome would that be that might be, honestly that might be my exit strategy i literally study i study the lakers nation podcast because uh they do they were doing almost like three to five episodes a week during the off season like nothing was going on and just to, to see how they go about uh finding ways to just make content that is new enough it was all the same shit, but it was it was just new enough, you know, the same but different that we do with our, you know, the workouts you have to make almost every day and uh, the lessons. And so, you know, that's a cool part of it, too. And for those listening, beyond the fact we're both fans of the NBA, um, I'll give you my kind of uh, lowdown with basketball. I, I played college football, but basketball has always been my first love. Uh, my body just lended itself more towards the horizontal nature uh, the football field. Uh, but Jeremy Scott was a high level collegiate <laughs> basketball player. Um, still can dunk at this age. Um, it's getting harder. It's getting, uh, it's getting hard. I, I, I see the footage, man. The shot is still smooth as butter. I'll tell people like, if you're kind of remember like when I was young, like we had a guy, a coach, he played in college uh, too. And remember I like one of those free throw shoots for like charity, like go around your, in the Midwest is what you do. You have no money. So if your team wants to travel, right, like you go around like the neighborhood and be like, hey, we, you, you know, donate 25 cents a free throw and I'm going to shoot 100 free throws and whatever you make, that's how much money they owe. And our coach, God, he had been like, I'm going to say old as fuck at the time, like probably 55, right? Um, but when you're when you're 12, you're like, he's ancient. And I think he made like 94 uh, out of 100, but I think like it was like, wow. like, like, like 90 of them were like in a row, right? Like he just got in this rhythm and I was just like, that is so impressive. But to your point, the shooting is what stays with you for most people. Like if you can get in a rhythm and someone can rebound for you and no one's guarding you, like you can be pretty good. The ball handling turns the trash. Your athleticism, sadly, like it, it does leave you. Like now it's like if I go outside and especially because like I don't play indoors, so it's concrete. If I am going to think about leaving the earth, I really have to think about it. And I go, is this the last time? I ever do this, which is kind of sad. Like when's the last time you see a sunset or, or do whatever? And you're like, but if I leave the ground right now, like is something catastrophic going to happen? Yeah, no, actually I, that happened to me uh, last week as I was about to demonstrate tuck jumps. I, 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 I do them in the pool all the time. I watch I video. On, I, had, I haven't done them on land in a while. And I'm like, you know, I did a nice warm up, but still you're like, am I going up and, and what's going to happen when I come back down? But, you know, um, speaking of shooting, Guess what my – so I, I played I played all through middle school, and then once high school started, I just focused heavily on football and, and uh, discus, and I just went full-blown football mode to try to get into college. 
Uh, then played again my senior year because I already got into Amherst and I was, you know, second his second semester of senior year in high school. It's it's all done. So I actually it was great. I got to like reconnect with all the, the my friends that I grew up playing basketball with. We won conference uh, my senior year. But guess what? My free throw percentage was my senior year. Like 60, 25 percent. Oh, that's like Shaq. Worse. Dude, worse than Shaq. And uh, it, it got so bad, too, because I used to go to the line and uh, my coach would just he'd be BJ focus. It's like, which is the last thing someone who has fucking anxiety at the free throw line needs is someone screaming at them. But uh, I'm a rebounding and defensive specialist. I, I can finish around the basket, but it's it's a little bit iffy. But if you need like a shutdown, I'm like Dennis Rodman um, without the length. But, you know, just the, the 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 physicality, if you will. Well, and then it's like now too, like if you ever did play again, like in a league, which would be like an over 40 league. And if you, I mean, it's like if you could do it with with governors on your body and not, you know, go crazy, you're already going to be like one of the best people just because you're in shape. Like that alone, you're already in the one percent of the one percent. You know, and that's one thing I'll mention too. Uh, I, I I played in this. Uh, it's, it was called the Business Basketball Association at the Kern Center in downtown Milwaukee, and uh, it, there were some high level, like former semi pro players. We had a couple NBA guys come through a couple times. Um, like uh what was his name what was his name uh i forget his name but anyway uh but then it's a lot of guys like j literally on the verge of tearing their achilles if they make the wrong step but you know played and um there is nothing like a workout you can get from full court basketball man it is so fun it's so competitive and uh, i miss it i might eventually try to get back into a league around here but i'm actually starting i'm rebuilding my basketball skills in the pool i got i got like poolside hoops just so I can I can take away all the impact, and uh, so it, it's it's a slow rebuild because you have to admit like have you ever had more fun than playing a cut like playing an hour or two of full court basketball with your friends? Oh, dude, I talk about all the time. Like I was like lucky enough to do it for a long time with like with friends. Like even if it was just once a year, like we would play until like late late thirties. And I would always tell my wife, I go, this is like my birthday, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving wrapped up into one day. And we would sit and again, now I couldn't walk for three fucking days afterwards. And I felt like just a complete bag of shit. And it probably took, you know, 10 years off my life and 20 years off my joints. I go, but the, it'll be the, it was my funnest day by far. Cause I'm like, I wasn't thinking about work or life or any of the bullshit. I'm like, I'm just trying to like, and it, and you know, every year I'd start. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna take it easy, and then ten minutes get in, and you're just trying to fucking kill everybody, and uh, because it's who you are, and it's like you, you get lost in the activity, and and I like fitness for what it is, but I don't get lost here in the activity. Like these are workouts, like they're not, they're fun, but they're not really fun. When I play basketball for two hours with friends, it's like two minutes went by. Like that's how much fun it is. And we're talking agility. We're talking up and down. I mean, it really is. Uh, and then if you play low, man, it's 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 about as physical as it can get without a helmet. Oh, dude, um, yeah. And especially as you get older, because you start oh, to like yeah. push and shove a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Just don't. Here's a couple things. Don't call offensive fouls and pick up. You can't. I used to get into the fights with these motherfuckers. Why are you calling an offensive foul on me right now? Because you know when I set a pick, man, I, I set the pick, but I'm, I'm not going to move. And if you run into me, you're going to feel the mass, the density of, of, of what was a football lineman. You know what I mean? But they call an offensive foul. No, if, if you're the one doing it, like if I bowl somebody over, then I can call it. If I'm the one dribbling and I put my shoulder into your chest, I go, but otherwise, no. There should be certain – again, that's the tough part about playing pickup with people who aren't your friends. It's like you get what you get. 100%, which is a, one of your favorite lines, by the way, as an avid yeah. listener of the podcast. Uh let me ask you this. Can you tell people exactly where you played? Um, yeah, I played in college at uh, Waldorf University, damn near 20 fucking years ago now. Uh, super, super old. Like, I could play, like, back in the day. But now, well, honestly, and now I look at it, too, how good these dudes are now. Like, dude, I'm watching kids who are 12, 13, like, doing shit that I couldn't do when I was, like, 20. And so I'm like, I don't know if I even might play anymore. Like, but again, that's every sport. Like, you watch MMA, you watch the NBA. It, they've gotten so, so, so good. Um, it's insane to see. 
it, it really what it is, it's it's the positionless nature of the game now. Like, you know, a big would be like, okay, just do just do the mic control and work on your post shots, but don't do anything outside of free throws. But now all these guys, they want to be able to play every position and they have all the skills. It's really it's been it's been amazing to see. Well, and you sent me like a little list before here and you put uh like Wemby on there. Just him alone. I'm like, I watched this dude, I'm like, this dude is dribbling like like I would dribble. And he's two fucking feet taller than me and like the range and everything. I'm like, or even just like when you watch Giannis like full court get a rebound, take basically four dribbles, and he's the length of the court. And it doesn't matter what foot or what hand they jump off of and what they do. And I don't think a normal person understands, like, to be right-handed and jump off of your right leg and dunk it in stride, in traffic, is, like, one of the most insanely athletic things for people to do. And they do it daily now in the NBA. Where, like, in the 1980s, you would never fucking see that. And I'm like, it's it's crazy to just watch, like, how insane it is. Well, let's let's start there because obviously he's the uh, most lauded draft pick since LeBron. I actually, maybe since Zion, which I wanted to talk about too, because it's just that guy. That guy has endless potential, and it just seems like the diet piece and the conditioning piece keeps letting him down. Or it might just be the fact that he's just got too much power for his frame. But Wembenyama is seven four, eight foot wingspan. Like you said, he handles the ball like a point guard. He's got touch around the basket and around the three-point line like a shooting guard and um, very thin, but he's 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 one of those like – like Manu Bo, for example, it was like seven feet of legs and then a, a trunk and a head on top of it. But he's got a lot of really good proportion. Like he doesn't look um, – it almost can look like gigantism sometimes, right, like when you get that tall. But his proportions – like this dude – has unlimited potential yeah i mean it's it'll come down to i mean the injuries i guess like a lot of people like if he can stay i mean the fact that he got with the spurs is crazy enough like it's a good system he didn't get i mean i'm not talking shit about like the kings or something but you know, and the kings are better now than they were but it's like you can get stuck with some of these franchises where you kind of just get swallowed up and i think at least he got into it's like the tom brady gets with the patriots versus yeah. versus the browns it's like I'm not saying Brady's not the GOAT, but he goes to Cleveland. We're not talking about him today the same way we talk about him. And I think that matters for these dudes. But, yeah, when I watch him, to be that big and that skilled, it's crazy. I guess it'll how they use him. Um, and then if he can just stay healthy, it would be – it would seem to me like I don't know how he doesn't just murder, like, over, over time. But, again, it's – kind of the NBA – again, like, uh, if you ever used to watch the N one mixtape tour, uh, I remember – they would do the interviews and Ali Mo was on there like in the hot tub one time. And he just, it, the simplest way he says like the NBA is hard, dude. Like the NBA is, it's not for everybody. Like the NBA is hard. It's like, I'm, I'm happy just doing this because the guys are so, so good. And you have to be so durable for so long. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really the issue with him. Like, obviously he, he, he is thin and those levers are just so prone to, you know, a rolled ankle or a twisted knee. But, uh, he just looks so balanced and athletic, man. And uh, he's also in an era where he's not going to be running into guys like Shaq. Oh no! So uh, I don't. I, it might not be that big of an issue. Like, like Jokic. Jokic is probably Jokic, Aiden. Those are the only guys I can think of that could really body him up. AD is is strong, but he's not like you know he's not a guy that's going to be pushing you to the basket. So he's coming into an era where he he really like if he was coming into the Shaq era. He'd have to live outside in the paint. He'd be up by the key. You can't be coming in the paint. No, the game is so much less physical than it used to be. So it really it caters to to him. So it'll be interesting to see like how good. I mean, it's like I, it's hard because like they'll be like, oh, you know, Zion and then like Braun are the only two I can think of that had as much hype. But and that's kind of I guess bothered me about the draft stuff. They'd be like, oh, he's he's better than like Braun was. I'm like, dude, like really. Like I'm not saying like, do you remember LeBron? Like would just he would he's fucking killed forever, like literally since high school he is killed. But the minute he came in the league, he is fucking killing everyone. He's not the best guy in the league, but he's like year one, top ten dude, easily. Yeah, yeah. and he's never left that. I'm like, so to compare that, it's like, can you compare 
that to some guy who's been crushing for 20 years. Like, I get the hype stuff, but I don't know. It's like comparing people to Jordan. It's like it's really – it's unfair to do for sure. It is. And then, you know, you look at what that hype has done to Zion. Um, and even Zion didn't get – I mean, Zion got a lot of press. But, you know, being on the cover of Sports Illustrated as the chosen one when you're still in high school, different level. And uh, But Zion, obviously, uh, and it's, it's been mostly injuries, but um, when he's when he's healthy, man, like that, that dude's like a mini Shaq. Oh, he's great, dude. Like he's, again, is he Bron good? No, he's never going to be. Uh, but if he can be a little bit leaner or just lighter, I think he'll be able to play more. I just... I couldn't imagine being to whatever he is, like 60, and being that explosive and moving that much weight through space all the time. Just seems like at 30 years old, how would his body be able to do it, let alone like 32, 33, 34? It's just like you get a lot of miles, man, on the joints and just stuff goes sideways. It, it just, it's so much power. And again, like that, that's a, that power is expressed in the college game, which is like a third of the games, shorter games. I mean, this, the NBA season, man, like to me, could, and like I know it's entertainment and it's sport, but the people inside of it, like it, it, it could also be if you wanted to like torture someone, give them an 82 game NBA season, all the travel, all the stress, all the post game pressers. Um, that's that's why like what I love to do. I, I, I live in L.A. I don't live. I live in California. But so when I moved here, I, I, I adopted the Lakers. And I like to take his team, and and now I do the whole offseason thing. I see what's going on in the offseason. I watch all the preseason games. I watch every game. And uh, I just – I love – it might be because of my roots in athletics, but I love to see a team from the beginning go through all of the uh, obstacles, setbacks, injuries, and just see how people react, all the egos, all the personalities, and just see what happens at the end of it. And uh, I, I just find a lot of pleasure in seeing – because I approached my business and my fitness the same way as, as another season. I know you probably have that same approach. Well, yeah, there's certain – there's times where, again, you say it all the time, uh, playoff mode versus practice mode. It's true because you can't – again, and these guys know people are like, well, I can't believe these dudes take, you know, these days off. I'm like, dude, you go – it's a job, you know, and, and I don't think we, we forget that until, like, you know, Jokic will be like, hey, man, I'd rather go hang out with my horses than play basketball, which is fucking wild that – he seems like sometimes disinterested and it like, it really does seem like it's a job to him, but it is like, they're not only like the physical part of playing that much basketball at that high of a level in a year to play 80 to hundred games seems fucking impossible for your body. So like, while well, this guy was, you know, he had a DMP, didn't play this. I go, you get sick at your job. You get injuries doing the shit you do. I'm like, yeah, they, this is their business is be, to be able to be available. But the fact that these dudes can play even half the games to me, like that seems very reasonable. Like even I know it's like, well, Kawhi doesn't play a ton. I'm like, dude, 50 games a year is, is, is insane. Oh. And so it's like, you got to kind of give them, I mean, I, it's tough. They're getting paid money and they're doing this. I couldn't imagine doing it. Um, and just how taxing it is year after year after year. That's why I to like watch like Le LeBron's done is you know I, i'm not saying he's better than jordan but that's just my personal opinion but his career i don't think anybody can ever match that for how long he's played at this high of a level and like until recently never really ever been injured it's wild to see well in the, one thing that's interesting too is i saw uh a zion, a zion an, an oppressor and he was saying that he had teammates this off season call him and tell him that they weren't happy with his effort, that he has to put more effort out there. And that's just something that you never had to say to Jordan, to LeBron, Kobe, Kevin Durant, to Kobe. Um, so, you know, that that's, that's not a great sign. Because, again, you know, a lot of what happens, um, you and I both watched the Johnny Manziel on Netflix. He was just a gamer. He, he lived, he played to, for the parties after the game. These are his words. Yeah. And you get to the NFL, man, and all, these guys are technicians. The film study is is just as, if not more important, than the actual practice or conditioning. Um, and, and you just, you finally, you quickly find yourself out of the league. So uh, it'll, I think this is going to be a pivotal year for him. And uh, 
that the man just has to lock in his diet and he has to do the that that outside the court body work that guys like LeBron have been doing since they were in high school. And that's the part where you have to realize, oh, this is a job. And yeah, I might not like to eat this way or I might not like to train. I just want to hoop and that's fine. But you have a, such a small window too. Because again, if I'm if you're a Zion, I'm like, I don't know the odds of him playing over 35 years old seem very slim to me. Because um, when he, if he's not good, what's he going to do? Like there's dudes who will play for 20 years but be role players for 10 of them. And there's dudes who just won't. And you watch him like he doesn't seem like the – guy who wants to be just the 12th guy on the bench so it's like dude your career's over in seven eight years so it's like this is the window you got to really sell out to it if you want to make it so we'll see so you, you mentioned uh obviously lebron 21st season he's going to be 39 in december my, my gut feeling as a, a fan of him since he entered the league and I, I followed him from cleveland to miami back to cleveland and now in la um I think this will be his second to last season as long as nothing catastrophic happens to his body. Because, you know, I feel like he's going to want to do the the farewell season, announce it in advance and do the whole tour yeah. uh, like like MJ did twice. <laughs> um, Kobe had a good one. Yeah, Kobe had a good one too. Um, so that that window is really closing. They, they, have a, they have a pretty solid – this is maybe the most solid and deep Lakers squad I've seen head-to-head with their championship bubble team. Uh, but but what what are you what are you expecting from someone like that in their twenty first season this year? Uh, obviously, they, what they've already done, like they said, this he he's gone. He worked hard in the off season with the whole coaching staff to like have a, like a plan in place for ramping up over the eighty two game season to get ready for the playoffs and and really manages minutes at a level he's never done before. Um, but like you said, at that age, you've done like just one three like two or three hour game. And, and you're wrecked for three to five days. It's almost like you played a football game. Yeah, I don't even – I don't know how he's even doing it. Like, because he still takes – there's guys who have played that long, like, at that age, but they're such role players. Like, when Vince Carter's at the end, he's just, like, spot up shooting Vince, and he's not starting, and there's really no major requirements. Like, Ray Allen, and again, they're also lighter, smaller dudes. I don't know. Like I, I looked at the ringers list of like the top where they rank, rank everybody like one through a hundred. I think they have Brown at like 12 is where they put him like the 12th best dude in the league. It's tough to say. Cause like, I remember him, you know, like Miami heat LeBron, like just fucking killing everybody. Six God. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I don't know like where it's tough to say. I mean, if he can stay healthy, it's cool. It's like, but you watch him now and he's still amazing and it's crazy at the level he plays, but he takes plays off. Like there's okay. shit that he does now where again, I don't fault him. Like I do the same thing, but there, he's just not, it's not the same. And like, I don't know if the other dudes can do enough if he can't just turn it on. Cause forever ago, LeBron could just turn it on. It's like all of a sudden he's sprinting the full length of the court and he's just bigger, stronger, faster than everyone. And now he's not that. And he doesn't have that. If it's a sixth gear or fifth gear, he's just got like, He's got four really good years, so he needs dudes now to, if Anthony Davis can be the dude. And again, as Barkley calls him, street clothes. Like they, they got to stay healthy, man, for sure. Yeah, no. The other piece too is that there's been six people that have played 21 seasons before, and the highest scoring average was Kevin Garnett at 7.6 points. So these guys are like, they're 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 pure role players at this stage. He, he last season he averaged close to thirty points, so I, he'll probably fall in around like twenty three to twenty five points a game, um, which again like we're talking three times the point totals uh, of the closest you know person to beat to to play this long. So it's it just it's really fascinating. Again, I, I think it's very difficult for the average person. Um, like we we have the ability to like adjust our workouts you know, um, push things back, move things around. I mean, yeah, they can take some games off and load manage, but, you know, it's not the same. You, you have to show up and play even when, you know, um, and like you said, he's just become so good at picking his spots and, uh, and, and taking the right plays off, right? I mean, you just, you have to, you just have to know, like, when it matters. And uh, you don't have to play championship defense the whole game in the regular season. You just have to be able to turn it on in the fourth quarter. 
Yeah, I mean, for these guys, like if they could just make the playoffs and get home court, that's probably what it is. Like you don't have to go out and try to be the, you know, the Bulls or the Warriors win 70 games. Like it doesn't matter. Like some of these games, again, I'm not saying they take games off, but like they'll just they'll punt a game. Like if you're down by 20, it's like, why is LeBron going to go in and play another 14 minutes if they have zero chance to win? It's like sometimes you just, I hate to say it, but you mail it in. Cause it's like, it is so so long in your top dudes like we'll talk about the Suns too like if injuries happen the season's done for these guys like if some of the key guys are out like the whole season's trash and the window for the Lakers is basically these two years and then when Bron's gone it's like where do we go from here because it's like it's a pretty big hole to fill it is yeah and again like I, I still marvel at his his last game um which was a, uh, a sweep, but it, it was, you know, it, it's, yeah, I'm a Lakers fan. It was a competitive sweep. Those games were, were a couple possessions each way, uh, but obviously they, they got swept. The Suns managed to get two games off of Denver. We're going to talk about the Suns' big three, uh, Lakers Nuggets, but um, a 40, a nearly 40-point 40 triple-double at that age with a torn tendon in his foot. So again, like I, you know, I, I know you do the same thing. I, I try to draw as much inspiration as I can because some of these mornings I wake up and I feel 85, um, you know. But it, it, it's a, it's just a remind. I think for him, uh, just kind of studying his process, I just don't think he he allows the space in his mind to let his age corrupt. You know, because age corrupts. Like you start you start kind of feeling sorry for yourself, or you start thinking about your limitations versus just your mind's ability to overcome. Um, I just don't think he, he allows the space in his mind for age to, to, to take away. No. And he's been, I mean, he's been the man for his, basically his whole life. So you have this insane belief that you can basically be superhuman. And I always say it's, you know, it's never a problem until it's a problem. And he's knock on wood, never had these catastrophic things where if you all of a sudden he's the, that's why I watch like uh, like Clay Thompson, and you watch his journey, and you're like, how fucking impressive that like, this dude didn't play for like 700 some days, and he's now back playing in the NBA, and he's still really fucking good. Came back from an ACL and an Achilles, and like LeBron's never had that. So it's like you're you are superhuman, you know, in, until you're not. And it's like so to his benefit, I think he's never had like to get mentally wrecked because he never had a go through this traumatic shit. So if he can keep that together, like he'll be fine. And as long as the pieces around him are good, but yeah, it's, I don't think a normal person watches it. And even if you like, you like him, hate him, doesn't matter. Appreciate how fucking insane it is. Cause like I wake up now and it's like, my body hurts. And like some of my workouts are just shit. And I'm like, all I'm doing is like bullshit exercise here to like look halfway decent. He's playing against 22 year olds who are the freak of the freaks and is still ultra competitive. It's one of the most impressive things to see. It is, man. Let, let's uh, let's shift gears to another warm desert. I'm from I'm in Palm Springs. You're in Scottsdale, and obviously the Suns, the Suns' big three. You got three guys who can score thirty points every night. Yeah, You're not as much depth, but they, I mean they still have like some really cagey veterans. Um, what's that dude's name? He used to be on the, the, the Rockets. I forget. Um, I just saw him play. They just played in, in the in Acrisure Arena in Palm Springs. It'll come to me. I, again, I'm, give me a break. I'm 41 here. I forget names. Um, but, you know, they, they've, got, they've got some solid role players too. And I'm honestly, I'm most concerned, even though Denver swept the Lakers, I, I'm more concerned about the Suns as a Lakers fan than, than, than Denver, to be honest. Just because Kevin Durant, like Kevin Durant, is maybe the best one-on-one -on -one player I've ever seen, and then, then, uh, I mean Booker, man, Booker is just Booker doesn't doesn't stop, and he's got he's got unlimited energy. And you add Beal to the mix. I mean, what are your thoughts? You're, you're, you went to a Suns game last year. Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, we go to them if we get good seats for sure. Uh, my tissue doctor I work with, um treats like the second majority owner so we get to sit on the floor so like feet on the wood is oh how I do. God. yeah so it's like it's it was myself him and then right next to me was like van gundy 
um, doing the announcing, which is fucking wild. Um, Cause then again, like and in that front row, when I was there, um, Mayweather walked by with like his whole crew of people. And when you get those seats, you get like all the, the backstage access. So like um, Balmer's in the bathroom. Um, Cause they're playing the Clippers. He's like taking a piss in front of me. And who else back there? That guy, he wears, he goes to he's at every game. He's a ton of Lakers games. He's an old dude, longer hair, wears the hats all the time. It's like always this weird fashion stuff. He travels everywhere. He always has young chicks with him. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's always at the Lakers games and the Clippers games. Yeah, so he was back um, like in the VIP area too, which was crazy. So, yeah, like we – and, again, everybody here is essentially like a Suns fan for the most part, or they talk about it a lot, and they hated uh, Eaton so much. Like just everybody – and I'm like, dude, he's a young kid. Like, he's good. Um, I know you paid him the money, so you expect him to be something else. But it's like sometimes dude's just – he's not Shaq, dude. Like, you're not uh, – there, there's only sh one Shaq, and he was not going to be that. There's only one Akeem. Like, he wasn't going to be that. He was fine for what he was. So I think trading in the had to do it for sure. Um, but with the amount of money you spent and you basically got three max dudes, like, you need to win, like, now. Um I don't know how many years they have. The windows like the Lakers, one or two at the most. But again, one of these dudes goes down, the season's trash. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Because you look like Booker. Like Booker makes tough shots, dude. Like the shot making is like it's it's extremely hard what he does. Like he takes tough shots, he makes them. And Beal has been a top five dude in the league scoring wise, like for a long time. So it's tough because like you can't guard all three dudes. Like, if you want to say Beal's the third option, that's fucking wild, man. Because whoever that dude is guarding him is getting cooked, like, all the time. And it's like, if you switch them, then it's Booker. And then Durant's a nightmare. Like, offensively, like, they got – there's nobody better, I don't think, in terms of shot making. Like, you have three of the top, if you want to say, ten shot making dudes in the league on one team. It's going to be tough to beat. But, again, the window is – the window's small because it's a lot of money you paid for a small, small amount of time. So this is this got to be their year, I think. And they just they just played uh, the Lakers here in Palm Springs, the final preseason game. And uh, I mean, they their their bench guys uh, ran the Lakers bench off the floor. Now we didn't have all our guys in, but they didn't they didn't even play Beal or Booker. Um, and Nur Nurkic is Nurkic is a solid big. Yeah. He's a big dude, man. Like he, uh, he's he's he'll, he'll give Anthony Davis plenty of trouble uh, on the glass, and um, so that, that that team that team concerns me. It really concerns me because they have Frank Vogel, your boy. Yeah, no, that that's what really because I thought he was an excellent coach, and he was obviously the fall guy for the whole Phil Russell Westbrook experiment. And the last thing you need is a, is one of these these coaches who really is about like the the nuts and bolts with a chip on his shoulder about getting fired right after winning the championship. Well, and he knows the Lakers, he kind of knows the system and stuff, so it's uh yeah, that's a tough one, man. It is. It is. Well, let me know if you get front court seats um for for a Lakers game. What about the biggest off-season story? Dame Dollar going to my hometown of Milwaukee. I mean, they should be – it's tough because, like, we were on a text, too, uh, with Dave Jack about um, Holiday and uh, and the band man hanging out together, which is mm -hmm. a story in itself. It's tough, man, because, like, I like Drew Holiday. Like, I thought he was awesome. Like, defense-wise, he's, he's one of the better defending guards in the league, like, easily. And uh, Dame is not that, for sure. Um, not that he's bad, but it's just it's levels. Um, but – the shot making of Dame and Dame's what 33. So he's kind of like in his prime window. And then if Middleton's the third option, that's again, that's a tough three dudes. They're good, man. The Bucks, I think they got better for sure. Um, if it's out of the East, you got to think they're the favorites. I would imagine for sure. Yeah. As, long as everybody can stay healthy, it'll be. Um, and again, like Dame should in theory, get a lot of good looks because he's never had, I mean, dudes like this around him. So, but that's crazy. Like it's um, Middleton's like by far the third guy now, but he'll get his 20 points. And if he's cool playing that role and they should be all right. I mean, they have right now, arguably the, the best player in the league for the first three quarters of the game in Giannis. 
And then there, there is no better closer than Dame. So, you know, it's going to take a while. It might take midseason until they kind of get their form. But obviously the, the pick and roll game, um, Giannis in his prime, Dame at, at tor- you know the tail end of his prime. And uh, I told my wife our property value just went up. We still own a condo on the River Milwaukee. So very close to, to where the Bucks play. And, uh, I mean, they, they should – if they don't make the finals, it, 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 it'll it be a failure of a season with, with how stacked they are. And again, they have both Lopez brothers. They have just two seven-footers they can just throw in there. I know. And they can shoot, too, and score points. Like, it's – they have – I mean, in the East, I don't think there's anybody else that's close to them at the moment. I mean, the Celtics, uh, they reloaded pretty solid. Obviously, they got Holiday. Um but and Tatum and Jalen Brown are an incredible combination. But I, I just feel like there's something, there's just something missing in the Celtics organization right now, where you just don't you don't have trust that they're gonna they're gonna win a win the whole thing. I don't know. Now they just seem to. Well, when I watch them, it's like I don't know how to describe it. Like when I'm a kid, it's different. And I'm watching the Bulls, I would always feel like they w- would win. Like no matter what, like they're gonna win or you watch like the Patriots like be down by two touchdowns and you're like, Oh, they can probably still win where I'm like, I grew up in Minnesota. So I'm a Vikings fan. Like we could be up by two touchdowns and I feel like we would lose. <laughs> um, I feel like that's like what the Celtics are like that's when I, and I don't know how else to describe it. That's just how I feel when I watch them. Like if they're not winning, they have no chance to like win the game. And even if they are winning, they can probably shit the bed. So they're like the reverse of, you know, the great teams. And I don't know if it's, Brown and Tatum together, like they're good, but it just seems like they don't, and they never won. So it's like they just can't get over the hump of whatever that is. Like you need either they need more pieces, or I don't know. But it's when I watch them, I'm like I just don't feel like they have what it takes. Yeah, no, it'll be really interesting. And uh, the the East, I mean, obviously with the whole, we're going to talk about Harden because you know Philly. Philly's no joke either, but it doesn't look like Harden's going to play another game for the Sixers. So I, I think I think they're right on the verge of sending him home. He's in Houston right now. He hasn't even, he hasn't played a game in the preseason. This is the third team that he's basically killed. Like, how does that work? Then, like, you just you're just like, hey, don't even come to work. Just keep your like. Can you? Because how can you trade him? Because people know you don't want him. So it's like you're going to get shit in the trade for. Well, that, that's the crazy thing about it is that he's actually – Philly overvalues him because he's the perfect fit for the, the reigning MVP, Embiid. Uh, Harden led the league in assists last year. But on other teams, he's not valued the same way. So th- they can't actually get the, the value they see in him through a trade. But he, he is he is the type of guy he'll just come and he'll play 50% the whole year, what we've seen. Again, like I, I, always, I always lean on the sides of players against – the front office, and even against, you know, coaches. Because I, I just I, – I, it's a player's league. The players make the whole league. Everybody knows it. Um, but this is like the third team that he's just like straight killed. I was going to ask you if you ever had like a teammate where – I don't, I don't want to call him a cancer, but it, it's kind of hard not to in the sense that um, you're making the entire preseason about you. There's – you know, you've got 13, 14 other guys in that team – trying to make a living, trying to do big things. And obviously I want you to get yours, but I mean, this is the third team you've like straight killed and you've killed, you know, you killed coaches careers, you killed uh, veterans chances of, of trying to win their first championship. I mean, what, what are your thoughts there? I mean, I've never had a guy that was like really good like that. Like you'll okay. get dudes who like are like, but they're bad. They're like, they're, they're good, but they're not top, top tier dudes. So they're marginal and they think, I should play more at this. I should get this. Like that'll happen, but never. A whole thing. Like he's thing. like regardless of what people think. Like some of the shit that he's done individually. Like you watch it. It's you know, the style of basketball or not. It's imp- He was having a tear for like I don't know how long. Where like you couldn't fuck with him. No one could guard him. No one could do anything. He's fucking just cooking everyone. But when you get to the point where you go from team to team to team and it's worse like when you leave than when you got there, like it's not good. And now it's like, again, I get the whole 
you and the owner got your beef thing, but I'm like, bro, like this is your career. And if I don't know, it would just suck for it to end like this, where it's like no one even wants like you're so good. It's like kind of like the bullshit mellow thing where I think Mellow got, you know, kind of railroaded. And I, I don't think a lot of it was his fault. And like there was a narrative about him, but like the Harden one seems to be true. Like you're gonna go somewhere and like if I'm the coach, like I got to deal with your bullshit and I might get fired and I might get blamed for it. And you're a head case and you're not as good as you once were. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a rough one, man. Cause I'm like to get rid of them. And then you're just, you're, then the Sixers are fucked. Yeah. I mean, Matt Maxi is, is fantastic. He's good. You, you need, you need three guys. You need three guys now. It, it's like, you know, uh, every, every team needs a big three at this point uh, of the way the NBA is. But I mean, it's, it, it's tough. Again, I'm always on the player's side, um, but man, he makes it hard. But like you said, I mean, he, he, he'll go down like, he'll, he'll go down like a Dan Marino, you know, one of the all time great uh, regular season players, uh, whether it's fair to them or not, that they didn't win a championship. Um, who's to say, cause you know, a lot of great players never won a championship, you know, Barkley, uh, but you know, Barkley also ran into Michael Jordan. Well, and that's the, I think it was like on the Gilbert Arenas had a podcast where they were talking about that. Like whoever pod he does, like him, Rashad McCants and somebody else, like Gil makes it obviously because he's just fucking wild, dude. Like I do like, I do like listening to him, um, even though sometimes he just goes nuts, but it was like, would you rather have like 50 million in a championship or like no championship and like 300 million and like, with not even like a tenth of a second hesitation, and Gilbert is like three hundred fucking million right now. It doesn't matter. And he was comparing careers too. So it's like, would you rather have you know Barkley's career or like Robert Ory's career? And it's like, well, we're not. And again, no offense to Big Shot Rob, which I'll bang out in a second here. We not. No one remembers him. No one talks about him. Like it's not a thing unless we randomly bring him up. Like Barkley is like, he's Barkley, dude it's a one name person and you remember him forever and no one would debate. Like I'd rather have Ori's career over Barkley's career. I don't think anybody would, would say that in their right mind, especially if you're like a real player because individually they're not even in the same stratosphere. Oh yeah. And I mean, what, what Barkley, especially his MVP season, man, in the desert, in the Valley. Right? I mean, again, if he's, if it's not Jordan, he's a champion, but there's a lot of guys, Reggie Miller, uh, Patrick Ewing, uh, Gary Payton wins one. Sean Kemp doesn't. It's like Malone, Stockton. None of these guys fucking win. Drexler. And Michael's the reason. Yep. It's like, and that's where it's like, I, it's it's tough to look at it both ways. On a side note, I did think about this the other day. They should really do a 30 for 30 um, on like the Kings, Lakers. Like they really like that whole, because that doesn't get like the Bibby, Weber, Pager. Oh, man. Like, that's one loose ball rolled away to big shot. Rob makes it the Lakers go ahead. If not, the Kings are going to be champ. They're going to go to the finals. They're probably going to win the championship. Like yet they never know that they become the Buffalo bills in the sense of like one of the best teams them along. It's crazy too. Cause like the trailblazers too um, against the Lakers when Shaq catches that lob from fucking Kobe, it's like they're down that game like they lose that game they probably lose and then the, that blazers team ends up being it but that i just remember that king series being like god man the kings are really fucking good but just couldn't couldn't get over the shack and kobe and like big shot rob no, again. so i have spectrum so they, they do all these like top 10 lakers moments um two of them like we just talked about the the that game where they're going down into a game seven into the fourth quarter 16 points trailing the blazers stacked rasheed wallace Rasheed Wallace is just a role player out there. I mean, like an, inc an incredibly stacked uh, team, but the one, the best one-two combination of all time in Kobe and Shaq, and they just find a way. And they have Derek Fisher, Robert Ory, like these just these killers. Um, Ron Harper just casually coming in, one of the best, by the way, one of the best guys to ever guard, Michael Jordan. Yep, that's Ron why Harper. Got yeah, that's why I got him. Um, so you know the. Um, these teams that never win a championship or these athletes that never win a championship that were so good because all we we just celebrate 
we only really celebrate victory here, I guess, if you're going to give a, a priority. But um, at the same time, too, like what about what about that OKC with Abaca, Westbrook, Durant, Harden? I mean, like potentially, you know, but they ran into the Heatles. They ran into a peak LeBron James. Oh, and they had uh, and they had Golden State beat too. Like they really had the Warriors beat and like against eight shit against them. But again, it that's why I'm always like, it's tough when you look at careers, individuals, like so much of it is like circumstance too and timing. Like how many dudes ran into to Braun and Wade in the league? And that's why they didn't win. Or the, like, oh yeah, we just happened to play. It's weird because people will do the Jordan LeBron thing. I don't like the comparison, but they'll be like, who's the best team in Jordan's era? And you're like, what's the Bulls? And they're like, who's the best team in LeBron's era? And you're like, Golden State. You know, which is kind of wild to see. Like, I don't know if it's like if that makes argument for or against one or the other, but it's like you're not even on the best team, dude, like in your era because like Golden State was so dominant for so long. But there's guys like, and again, I'm not saying Draymond isn't good, but again, circumstance. Draymond ends up on the Timberwolves. We're not talking about him. And you, honestly, he, he might not have been even on the second best team. It was probably the Spurs. Is that crazy? Yeah. But I mean, he was, he was so, and, he, but, and both, both, he won. Um, he won against both. They, but he also lost against both. Also, we're talking like all time coaches he, he's playing against, too. Well, yeah, it's uh, that again, circumstance, man, that matters. So, what, what, what do you think? This is so early. Obviously, the NBA tip off is at the time recording this a couple days away. Um, well, before I get to that, what do you think about uh, the Lakers and Nuggets beef? Again, I, I'm a Lakers fan. Um, they're, they're, they're playing opening uh, nights, but uh, Mike Malone has talked a lot of shit. I've never, I've, I've never seen a coach talk so much shit. So um, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, it's weird because like coaches don't play, which is strange to me. It's like you don't, you affect the game, but like you're not playing, dude. So it's just bullet board material like I wouldn't do that if I was him but obviously I'm not him obviously he felt slighted I think about how much lo- I mean I get it though because the Lakers are the Cowboys dude like it's like America's team even though it's not but it's like you talk about the Lakers so much like even when they're shitty like they would talk about them and I think for him he's like well what the hell like there's so much Lakers coverage and we're talking about these guys yet you're not talking about us but again the Nuggets have never done anything so that's like kind of just what drives the nervous. It's you're you're selling the fight or you're selling the series essentially. But for some reason, like that just that rubbed him the wrong way. And so he just went on a little rip. I mean, it's tough because like they're fucking good too. Like the nuggets are good. And so it'll be interesting to see those two for sure. Cause it's again, with the Suns and Golden State, like the West is that's rough, dude. That's a rough, it's a rough go. I mean, it's gonna be all five hundred teams. He's got, they're they're just going to kill each other this whole this whole season. I mean, it, it, it's like it, it, we haven't even talked about the Timberwolves, uh, Anthony Edwards, uh, the Twin Towers. I, I, I know that that didn't really gel as much as people had hoped, but the Lakers barely made it through the Timberwolves in the play-in. Um, ended up losing to the champions in, in the in the conference finals, um, and, and they might be just they might just be a sixth seed. That's how, that's how good the West is. I mean, it's it's really incredible. It's going to be amazing to watch. What what is your what is your preseason prediction? Uh, we're not let's, we're not going to do like every team to make the playoffs. I guess top top three to four teams in each conference, and and who who are you picking to win the whole thing here? I mean, if you're in the East, you got to think like the Bucks, obviously. Uh, I mean, if Harden can play, or maybe I mean the Sixers are good, the Celtics are good, um, the Heat are always. They just show up, you know, I don't know how, um, but they just, they do, you know, it's, they're good, but it's like, again, you watch them, like, they're not good enough to win at all. Like they just don't have enough pieces, but they'll be like those guys. And then obviously the Suns, man, if the Suns can stay healthy, the Suns are legit. The Nuggets are legit. Golden State's legit. The Lakers are good. Um, Again, it's all these things are, it just can't, can all these guys play? You know, especially towards the end. And how are they playing at the end of the season? 
And if one guy goes down, because again, the NBA now is a different world where you need to have basically three fucking legit dudes going in all cylinders or two really good guys in a pretty good third option. But if one of those top three guys is gone, and even that, like the, the benches matter. Like you watch it against the Nuggets. Like I felt like the Lakers had playing even the Suns, like the Suns didn't have enough dudes like last year. Like you watch the bench and then you look at guys in the clip, and even even though obviously they, they win, you watch the Clippers and like the Clippers got a lot of dudes. Like they had a ton of guys. Like just they just happened their top two guys weren't fucking playing, but there's a lot of guys on the bench. And so who can be healthy? And then when it comes down to it, if you have to, like what moves are these guys going to make towards the end of the year if, if they feel like they are close and they got the top, their top three guys are actually playing. Because again, the Suns are, sh- if KD goes down, the Suns are shit. Like, or Beal, or Booker. Same thing, like, oh, LeBron can't play. Well, good luck. So, but those would be my four in each, I think, you know, barring some catastrophic injuries. I, I, w- I would agree with the four in each for sure. And I, I think the reality is, um, if Denver is as good as they say they are and then Jokic is as good as everyone says he is, you're going to win back-to-back. Because that's what all the greats do. That's yeah, what all the all-time greats do. So, like, the true all-time greats, uh, players and teams. So, um, if they don't win back-to-back, then that team obviously wasn't as good as we thought it was, in my opinion. Because they lost a couple dudes, though. They, they lost Bruce Brown, which, which was – he was uh, a real problem for the Lakers – yeah. He played. He played D'Angelo Russell off the floor, and D'Ang- D'Angelo Russell even said uh, his whole goal this season is just not to be played off the floor. Um, and he, he's actually improved a lot. Uh, he's been looking great defensively for him. Um, he took it to heart, man. Like you either, like he went from being like one of the Lakers' saviors after the whole midseason trade, where that team that team started. Um, one and five, two and ten, and then found their way to be four games away from the NBA Finals, um, and he was a big part of that. But like the Nuggets, completely got in his head and exposed him on defense. So, and they had a lot of key additions, I think, defensively on the wings that could give Denver trouble. So, in terms of like a reload, I think the Lakers are poised to, to at least take it six or seven games. If they face the Nuggets, but I, again, I'm concerned. I'm most concerned about Phoenix because um, Kevin Durant is just—I uh, don't know—he's he's just a problem, man. He's just a problem out there. When 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 you have that level of spacing with those other threats, you just you can't guard a seven footer shot. You just can't do it. Well, no, and it's like, does Anthony Davis guard him? Is that what we're talking about? I mean, it might be Vanderbilt. I mean, but good luck. It's when that's what I mean. I'm like, and if, if those guys aren't by the basket, it's like, okay, well, KD's drawing everybody out, and it's like, okay, Booker can just do whatever he wants to do. Or, you know, again, there's nothing against Austin Reeves or whoever. I'm like, you're guarding Booker, dude. Like, no. Like, there's just dudes who, it's not a knock against Reeves. Like, he's great. There's just dudes who aren't guardable. And there's really nothing you can do, especially when, like, you're not the number one guy. Or it's like, oh, we'll just leave Beal out there. Who, it's, it's tough I man. when you got three again it was like golden state like with kd and clay and steph were so fucking good it's like if one guy is not on it doesn't matter because these other two guys are and again you're talking especially like that team top five shooters of like all fucking time like it, it's insane to see so it'll be yeah if the suns can be healthy man they're going to be a problem for the lakers and and for anybody so what's a more likely finals Milwaukee I mean, against Denver or Boston against the Lakers, which would be an like, that that's like the dream scenario because now you got both of these teams, seventeen championships, going for the eighteenth against each other. Like that, that's like that's kind of the dream. I think if you're a, a a macro NBA fan and you're not just thinking about your own personal. Again, I'm biased as a Lakers fan, but I'm just saying what's best for the league. Though a Denver Milwaukee matchup. The two true number ones in both conferences would also be incredible. Yeah, I mean, like, it would be – for people who are young, they don't give a shit. But if it was, like – because they don't know. Like, if it was Lakers-Celtics, it would be cool just to see. Yeah. And, and, and you saw it, um, the KG in uh, Kobe finals. You got a piece of it. Um, but, like, just because of the, the history forever, 
I think the, the Bucks Nuggets would be cool. Or even like again, if the Suns can be, if they're fun to watch, like the Suns Bucks will be badass too. Just because I think that'd be a, again. It, if the Suns are shit, who knows? But I'm like, you. Just, I don't, it's tough because like you, you have to be good. It's just like you just figure like you got three insanely talented guys. Like, how are you gonna keep them under a hundred and 10, 115 points a night when three guys can easily get you 30 a piece. Like there's 90 points right there just off by accident. Yeah, no, I I I don't know what though I, it would be nice to see uh the Lakers against the Bucks too. That'd be cool. And then, then I I'm like a true sellout to my to all the people back home. Yeah, that's tough. Like that's why again, what I always say, like you're Everybody has a different stance. Like my view is just like you're just born into whatever you're born into. That's you know, true. like uh, I look at NBA teams as like a how I would think of like a, a class system of like like socialism shit, where it's like you're just you're class one, class two, and you're just fucking stuck there. Which yeah. I don't think for the world is is I think it's fucking terrible. Um, but for like sports, like I'm from Minnesota, dude. Like this is just you get what you get. Like this is your team. Like it's tattooed on your face. And you can't change it, no matter how shitty they are. You know, you get lucky with the Packers because you get, you know, Favre and Rodgers for a hundred years. You know, but like us, like you get Timberwolves, like you're you're good, but you never be good enough. You know, you're the Vikings, you're good, but you never be good enough. Like so, I, I just I stay with the home. But you would win win because it's like you're from Milwaukee and now you're a diehard Lakers fan, so it works across the board. So I mean, look, I, I would. By the way, for mental health purposes. The, the appropriate way to be a fan of any league is to have three teams in order, right? So Lakers are my number one. Um, number two, I, honestly, like, because I, I, I've been a LeBron fan, so I really loved the uh, the Miami Heat. Kind of fell in love with the culture, uh, Spo, Riley. Um, and I wanted to see them win against Denver um, in this past finals. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Uh, but you know, I'm happy to put Milwaukee as my third team in terms of like again, I I, I still watch the games anxiety free because again, I only have anxiety about Lakers games. But I, I would you know if the Lakers aren't going to win, I would love to see Milwaukee. I got no problem with it. But again, I'm not going to. I'm also not going to be one of these fake ass fair weather fans. I was never really a Bucks fan. Um, though again, like I told you via text, I, I did like. I did like like the Vin Baker, Glenn Big Dog Robinson, Ray Allen squad. Oh, yeah. Classic purple green uniforms that they went away from. Like that was to me like peak Milwaukee basketball. Um, but MJ was 90, 90 miles away. And I got I got WGN so I can watch all their games and I get to see the greatest player ever to play. So it, it was just, you know, what do you want me to do? Well, that's why I tell people too. I'm like, we could watch the like I don't get why you're such a Jordan fan. I'm like, well, for one, greatest of all time. But I'm like, we would get WGN. So we would watch all the Bulls games. And I don't even know if the Timberwolves games were on fucking TV, dude. Like, maybe they were. But, like, I'm, I'm rooting for, like, you know, Tom Gugliotta or, like, you know, Pooh Richardson or J.R. Ryder. Like, that's going to be, like, that's my diehard team. Like, they're trash when I can just do everything via the Bulls and, like, live through Jordan. So are you – are you – what's your – a hierarchy it's it's timberwolves and then suns um yeah probably at this point like i'll i'll root for the suns i don't again but if i watch them like i I wait until i like let the year play out to see like how much i give a shit you know and like anytime let's i, I would have liked to seen the heat win um over the nuggets now i got nothing against like Jokic and those guys but i just think like it's a the jimmy butler is a better story because it's for like sure. I, the guys feel like you shouldn't really be there you know, it's hard to root. And again, I used to hate Golden State. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck those guys. And then after a while, I'm like, oh, actually, I kind of like them. Like, they're fun to watch. Like, I wanted LeBron and Cleveland to beat them because they had been beating everybody's ass for so long. So not like I, I wasn't emotionally invested into it, but it's like I I kind of go season by season of, like, what team I can I can get behind. Especially, like, if you got – it's it's the players, right? Like, you, you follow the players. Like, it's really hard to – otherwise, you're just – you're cheering for jersey colors. You know, yeah. at the day. So it's like I kind of follow like who's on what team and like that's what I do. It's it's like this classic arc um where like you start, you know, you dislike and then you hate 
And then all of a sudden you, it kind of transcends into respect. Like I hated Tom, I hated Tom Brady. And I'm like, yeah, okay, seven Super Bowls. Okay. All right. I give yeah. up. I step away. Steph Curry, it's like, come on. What am I going to, what? I used to just die inside every time he would just catch the ball when playing the, the, whoever it was, just because he, he, he's going to make the shot. He's going to make the shot. And if he, and he also, he's going to, uh, there's just, there's guys out there like Durant, Curry, like they don't have bad misses. Like the, it, it either, like it goes all the way through the net and almost rips the net or like maybe it rolls out. Worst, worst case scenario, it rolls. There's, there's no air balls. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys don't even have bad misses. Gotta show respect. Well, they take the hardest shots too, but it, no, it is true. Cause like I remember watching the OKC series against Golden State and they're up, I think, two games to zero. And Golden State just comes back, but it's like on the most insane curry fucking 30 footers off the dribble, not even looking at the basket. I'm like, okay. I'm like, how can I this is the like what I'm watching is never gonna happen again in my lifetime and probably never gonna happen again. So it's like even if I like don't root for the team, like I have to appreciate like the mastery of like watching it happen in real time, like how insane some of these dudes and teams are. But it's tough for people to admit, like, oh, the Packers suck. I'm like, yeah, I can say that, but I'm like, Rogers was smoking, dude, for fucking 10 years, and Favre was good for 10 years. Like, they're just good, dude. Regardless if I like the Lakers or not. And I'm like, if I'm like, I don't like LeBron, I'm like, I can't deny, him. like, he's fucking all time, dude. I'm like, it's just, you have to take away your personal bias. I think sometimes, and that's really hard to admit, like, oh, yeah, like, the team I hate is fucking awesome. I'll leave one prediction here, and and this this is this comes with the possibility of a season-ending injury in Game One. But I'm going to predict that Anthony Davis is the league MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year this year. So I'm going to just leave that, and I, I will I will likely eat it um, if, if he gets hurt. But I, I feel like this he's. He's 30, bro, and Le- LeBron is literally passing the torch this year as the face of the franchise, and it's either now or never for AD. Yeah, I mean, that's – to do both in this day and age, I mean, that's like some – that's some Jordan shit. It is. And, and he's – by the way, he's the best defensive player I've ever – I've watched a lot of basketball, and he's the best defensive player I've ever seen. I've never seen a guy – he had five. he had five blocks in the first quarter. The last preseason game, he blocked all five of Nurkic's shots in the first quarter. Um, he's that he's that he's that type of cat when he's locked in. And he, I think he made the mistake in the last two seasons of trying to get heavier. Um, where again, like you, you, we talk about this all the time, like you got to you got to understand your natural weight class. You know, he, he you're not a, you're not a two sixty plus guy. You're you're that you're that two forty guy. You can run run all over the floor and. 20, you know this, 20 less pounds, what it means over the course of a, a season. Or, uh, or you could say 20 added pounds, what it can do to your body over the course of a season. So do um, you have any wild predictions to finish off with here? Uh, I mean, the Anthony Davis one's pretty wild, dude. I mean, it's uh, it could happen. But I don't know. I mean, like if things played out, like it's tough. The MVP is always hard, too, because like the team has to be legit. But – you know, who really is the, I guess I always go like, you know, whether it's MVP or like, who really is the best guy on earth? Like, is Jokic really the best dude? Like, if you had a draft, like, would you take him first? Like, or would you take Giannis first? Like, so if the Bucks are legit, like, Giannis is the MVP, dude, like, to me. Or if it's the other way, like, I don't know who for the Suns is so breakout that, like, they just go ahead and above. So it'd be interesting to see, but I would guess. Giannis MVP, like I could roll with that because he, I really do think right now in this moment of time, like he is the best, he's the fucking dude I'd roll with because he's just a, he's a problem, man. I think the most fun uh, matchup is, is Giannis AD because those two guys, like it's, it's two seven footers that are like legit, the top two, two way players in the league in their primes. Um, Giannis has the edge on physicality strength uh davis has the edge on touch shot but i mean it's a it's literally a draw when those two guys play 
Yeah, they're both. I think when people watch, like again, that's if Davis can stay healthy. Um, I don't know if he's ever played 82 games or anywhere close. Not that he has to play all 82, but can he just, you know, not be banged up consistently over time? But yeah, when you watch, like that's why I tell people, like just regardless of if you like guys or not, like how amazing it is. Like imagine Anthony Davis, like in 1972, or Giannis in 1991. Like you would drop them into a series and be like what is this fucking alien doing here on the court right now? Like, how is this even possible? So yeah, they're just both like freak of the freaks, man. So before we close out and kind of push what we got going on, I'm, I'm going to make a push. I'm, make a, I'm going to make a call to the people. And I am pushing for Jeremy Scott to be in the next NBA All-Star Celebrity Game during All-Star Weekend. I want to I want to see you out there just fucking one, one last hurrah Drop 30 points against like Kevin Hart's. Oh, you're at the level now, man, with this podcast. You're at the you're at the level. If it's like uh if it's like all old dudes, like I remember like what was it one time? It was like oh, Obama's like secretary or like one of Obama's like dudes who was in his cabinet was like out there and he had to been like in his fifties and he's just fucking cooking dudes. He was cooking, yeah, he was. I forget who what his role was, but it's like, it was either security or he was like uh it wasn't chief of staff. It was, uh, but yeah, he was he was high up high up there, and I think he actually played in the the, the regular Obama pickup games too. Well, it's tough too because like you watch. I think if you're like a bigger dude, um, it's easier to play as you're older. Like if you were the guy, like let's say a teammate of mine who's like six seven six eight, and they always kind of played that way. It's easier than if your game was like you're fast and athletic. And then now you're not fast and athletic anymore. And you have to like play kind of old man basketball. Like you get smarter, but yeah, that would be tough, man. It's uh it's like everything. It's like in fitness, it's it's humbling to see your natural regression of just athleticism. It just no matter how you fight it, it just has to go that way. Like, and in your brain you can you can deny it for a long time, but then you're just like, yeah, I can't do that anymore the way I used to do it, but against like a Kevin Hart, like, yeah, I think I'd be okay. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, right, you got to talk to your boy, Ryan Rossello to hook this up because this, this would be like, this would be must watch TV. I, I, you can still dunk and you and, and the jumper is still wet. Do you remember like, we remember watching when, uh, like when T.O. played in it, like years, like probably 10 years ago, maybe even longer. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Real athletes. Like T.O. is a fucking problem, dude. He's probably he's probably like 40 at the time, maybe. Oh, yeah. And you're like, okay, this is – and then you see like he's there and like Justin Timberlake's there, and you're like, okay, yeah, there's a difference, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like this is this is just – this is my dream for you. I, I could, For me to be able to tune in to see this, come on, man. I, I feel like it has to happen. So I'm going to make a push for that. Um, let let the people listening uh, – you know what, what? What are you? What are you cooking? What? What's? What's new down the way? And where can they find out? Learn more about you? Uh, yeah. Uh, you guys, the Jeremy Scott Fitness uh, podcast. We do. We just did one this morning. Um, we're there all the time. Uh, JeremyScottFitness.com. The app is there too for you guys. And then uh, we've got a mastermind group kicking off for a lot of people who are looking to just uh, whether you're solopreneur, entrepreneur, you maybe want to go career changes, or you you have a business but you want to kind of move it to another level. Uh, a buddy of mine who has been very, very successful, him and I are going to kind of tag team that. Um, the start of 2024, if you guys are looking to kind of level up those things, we got that going on. But I'm like BJ. I'm around. I share all the shit all the time, just pumping out stuff. Not, I want to say it feels like aimlessly, like we have a plan. But at this point, I'm like, you know, I don't know. Anybody who's done a job for long enough, you just like sometimes ask yourself, like, what the hell am I doing? Like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing today? Like how much more, like, I don't know. It's like, it's weird because like, you know what you do matters and it's important, but you're like, how much more fitness does the world need? Like, am I going to make another workout today? Like, is that, is that really what I'm doing? But if you want them, we have more content than, than anybody I think out there. So if you guys are looking for stuff, we are there. But if you follow BJ, like you got to go on here. Likewise, man. No, you can't go, you can't go wrong. Uh, when, when you're following people that live it, 
have have just as much uh, wisdom and experience as anyone else out there. But again, I you know we talk about this all the time. Like that's I think why we we are so impressed with what LeBron's doing is that you know um, to do what both of us do at this age um, and to do it at this level and to also still maintain the level of physical conditioning um, is it's not easy. Not a lot of people do it. So, uh, you know, we, I think that's part of why we gravitate towards each other. You can follow uh, what we do at the BJ Gador podcast, iTunes and Spotify. Uh, half the episodes of Jeremy Scott, but we're doing our best over here. And uh, at BJ Gador, all outlets. And again, if you're a trainer listening, I am offering for the first time in the history of my content, I'm, I'm going to be doing a special kind of licensing or, or white label opportunity where you can get all of my 2023 content and use it to build your own online business in 2024. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I, I, I've been talking to uh, our boy Pat Rigsby about it, so I'm gonna be we're gonna be partnering up on that. And uh, like it'd be like your videos and shit. Yeah, man. Like basically the all 90 instructional follow along workouts I made this year, um, they'll be able to 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 basically uh, white label license. And uh, I mean, I spent. Ten thousand dollars of my own money just uh, producing it. Not to mention all the time filming, editing, programming, which no trainer is ever going to do. I mean, again, like pe people don't even make ten of these. Um, so um, I'm, I'm appreciative that you know it's like twenty years of work coming, but uh, you know it, it just it reminds me of just like when when uh, I first got into the streaming business, like it would have taken it quarter million dollars to do what we just did this past year but i've learned so much we film in my house my wife films you know um so it's just it's just crazy to look back on and i know you feel the same way like this like to, to to create this radio show you've created as you do so lean um 10 years ago this would have been like a multi-million dollar endeavor to oh, be yeah. able to people do it the technology is made the barrier for entry way better and way easier and made things way more accessible for everyone which is pretty awesome especially like when you've got the stuff the content behind it. it's so like when they get the stuff like is it your it's it's your actual video so like yeah like all the pdfs of the workouts all the videos um and again like uh we we generated from that uh investment over a quarter million revenue just from that content um and they're going to be able to access it for a fraction of the cost. So it's exciting because, again, you know, I think we're both at phases where, I, look, you're doing the mastermind thing because you've realized at some point, you know, I'll, I'll, you're going to always continue to share workouts in your own way. But maybe instead of a daily workout, at some point it becomes a workout of the week or a workout of the month because we need to keep, you know, uh, watering our own plants and feeding our own souls and being, being continually challenged and trying new stuff. So now you're going to the point where you're like, let me show you how I built this business in my own image and I live my life on my own terms and my own way. There's no more valuable asset than that. And then you're allowing people to go do that. They'll, make, they'll never be Jeremy Scott, but they'll be who they're intended to be at the, the highest level. And that impact is exponential. And it, it's funny too, because I actually started like heavily with trainers and the impact of, because, you know, dude, they need us. Half, half the industry uh, left during the pandemic. And I'm just from what I've talked to people like, uh, you know, Justin Yule, and he's heavily involved in stuff like that. Apparently yeah. the, the trainer today is like not as smart as the trainer was 10 years ago. So it's going to take guys like you and I sharing our knowledge and passing down our unique skills to help them stay in the game and, and, and flourish, you know, so that it, it's, it's exciting to be a, to be at the point in our careers where this this has actually worked for us, where we can have a conversation about the NBA 2023 season in this way, which I had a blast with, by the way. Um, but now we're in a position where we can just start really sharing our wisdom and knowledge to empower the next generation, man. That's what it's all about. Well, yeah, because it's such a weird, and then like our stuff for sure, the fitness is such a weird field. Like there's no natural path. Like no. they're, they're, it's a fucking wild west, dude. And like of what people think they want to do versus what reality is. And again, that does always change and shift too. Cause like, you don't think about it when you start it, you don't think about it when you're 22, you're like, Oh, what do I want to do in 25 years? 
I'm just going to keep doing fitness. And like, maybe you will, like some people love it, but, and again, I'm not against it, but I'm, I'm saying I'm just tired today. Um, I'm fucking here. It's a Sunday. And I'm like, I got to be back here tomorrow at like five in the morning. And I'm just like, I don't know if I want to do that tomorrow. No, I'll do it because I have to. But I'm like, how many more Mondays do I want to do that? Or how many more, you know, workout programs do I want to create? And like, can I get excited about? And not that like, there's not a need for it in the marketplace, but it's like, and that changes and evolves too, which is, again, there's no rules here. We're just making this shit up as we go. There's no rules. And, and, and there's also, there's neither a ceiling nor a floor when it comes to this business. There's, like, that, that's what's kind of crazy, but it really is like, after all these years of, you know, being at the start of online fitness, there, there is no floor and no ceiling to this. And, and that that's great for the people that are willing to just go out there and just like fuck the world in the face. But if you're not lucky or blessed or both, uh, people, people are in and out of this industry in six months. Yeah, I would not, uh, that's not to talk anybody out of it, but I would not want to jump in fresh in 2023 to the, ecosystem or the environment if you love it like yeah you'll be fine because there's always going to be a place for people who like are really good and really give a shit um whether that be in person or online but it is i don't know like there just seems like there'd be but again you have to like what you do there would be easier routes to make money for sure than make this be the primary thing that you do in your life if, if money was the the main concern to you because you have to be you have to die for this like for a long fucking time to gain any traction, or at least I had to. It, just like these guys in the NBA, all the talent, and like I said, these guys have all the talent in the world, and you get to the, that 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 final level, the boss level in the video game, and it's like, oh shit, I can't just be good. I got to be like, I got to be the best in and out of the gym, on and off the court. Um, dude, this was an absolute pleasure. Um, if, if we get good feedback on it, maybe we'll jump on uh, mid season or playoff preview if we get to that point. But uh, really enjoyed this. If you're not listening to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast radio show, you got to check it out. And uh, any any final closing thoughts? Uh, no, I just uh, – I, I, can't, I can't wait to see the Suns actually play, play like legitly play and see how, how good they are. But, yeah, hopefully people like this. If not, fuck it. Take, take what you want. Leave the rest, man. Just yeah. – we'll, sometimes- we'll be- Sometimes I just listen to podcasts like I'll like I'll turn someone on just to listen to people talk in my car versus just listening to music or like some depressing ass news station all the time. So it serves a purpose. Well, so let me close on that, because part of why I really again, I love the season. It gives you something to look forward to. It motivates me to see athletes go through the ebbs and flows, deal with injuries. But, um, you know, ultimately, like I use it as a great time for my recovery. I'm always in I'm, I'm either in the Norma techs, uh, getting some compression on my legs, my arms, or my hips. Uh, oftentimes, I'll just do some some stretching or mobility work during the game, especially important. Like if the season's not going well, it's hard for me at this age to give away two hours of my life. But if I'm stretching and doing mobility work, it's great. They, they lost. Okay, it's terrible, but at least I, I did something good for me. So, uh, or I'll, I'll get my power dot uh, electric stim on. I'll hit my quads. I get a little quad workout going. So. Um, for those that are stressed out, look, man, stress for the guys listening, stress, it kills your dick. Okay. True. It kills your bank account. It kills your joy. So you've got to be proactive about finding ways to like, both for Jeremy and I, this is like, it's nostalgia. It's also just like connecting with something that was important to us when we were young. Um, it's a break from reality. It's, it's like a, a safe, safe space. space. Yeah. It's a safe space. Like everything is negative around us. And, you know, that's why you and I both love to do that daily walk. No one ever gets in our, our there's no negativity on that daily walk. Right. Well, it's, like one, it's one of the only times I can just not have people fuck with me. I can't read anything. I don't see anything. I'll do a video for you guys or whatever. And then I'll pop off because I'm like. Otherwise, I just got shit going on all day, man. It's like it's helpful. And then sports, too. Sports is escapism. Especially if you get lost in a game, like you give a shit about it. And it's like 
your heart rate goes up and down as the game goes up and down. Like it's a it's a cool thing because you don't get that in your normal life. It's typically just you're in that fight or flight shit with most of your work and you know your kids and your traffic and whatever. So sports is a uh, sports is a gift, man, for sure. I'm thankful for it, man. All all my closest friends for the most part are former athletes, whether I played with them or not. I just, uh, I've always loved gamers, red light performers, and uh, it, it's fun to just have something, you know, to look forward to. Something to look forward to. The, the, <laughs> a lot of these games, and uh, by the way, this opening week is incredible. We've got uh, Lakers against Nuggets night one, and then, then there's going to be uh, the Lakers play the Suns, I think, a day or two later. So we're, we're going to find out a lot about where people are in this first week. No, it's legit, man. I'm excited. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, five-star ratings and reviews are so appreciated. The five-star just takes a second. And as I tell all the people on my podcast, for a review, just say BJ Podcast Good. I'm asking for three words. I don't. It doesn't have to be a short story. It doesn't have to be gra grammatically accurate, and I, I'm sure Jeremy feels the same way. Uh, what, what do you tell them? I, I recently offered a French kiss for a five star review. I mean, I will. I mean, I always tell them like, if you like it, dude, and we've given you any value at all, at any point, whether it be on Instagram or YouTube or emails or the podcast, like, give me ninety seconds on Spotify. It takes probably ten on Apple. You can actually write some words and drop a five star. Like, you're giving away hours and hours of free shit. Like. And nobody does this at restaurants. Typically, only people they leave reviews when negative shit happens. So if you like people and you want them to keep doing this shit for free, leaving a review is, is probably the least you can do. And buy some buy some athletic greens, Fuck. also called AG1. Links in show notes, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy the NBA season. And uh, thanks for sharing your day with us. Peace.